A hero is someone willing to sacrifice his or her needs on behalf of others, like a shepherd who will endure loneliness, discomfort, and danger to protect and serve the flock. In 1949, an American literature professor, Joseph Campbell, wrote a book titled The Hero with a Thousand Faces, where he discussed his theory about the journey of an archetypical hero used by people all over the world. Then, in 2007, Christopher Vlogler, the Hollywood development executive, screenwriter, author, and educator, wrote a book inspired by Campbell's titled The Writer's Journey, Mythic Structure for Writers. This book is split into two sections. The first is about character archetypes that you would usually see in a story. The second part of the book goes through all 12 steps of the hero's journey, chapter by chapter. This video will be going through those 12 steps of the hero's journey while using the 2008 film Iron Man for examples. Starting with Number 1. The Ordinary World This part of the journey is about the hero's everyday life. The function of this part is to introduce the audience to the main character. This world is usually boring and calm in comparison to the special world that the hero will soon enter. In Iron Man, the audience gets to see that Tony is the CEO of Stark Industries, a weapons manufacturer, and a playboy who exhibits reckless behavior. At this point in the story, it is very clear that he has a lot of character flaws that need to be resolved. The next part of the hero's journey is Number 2, The Call to Adventure. This is the event necessary to get the story moving. Like the name suggests, this is the event that calls the hero to start the journey. It could come in the form of a message or a messenger, or it could even be something like a declaration of war. A call to adventure could be unsettling and push the hero outside of their comfort zone. For Tony Stark, his call to adventure was being kidnapped by terrorists. Next is Number 3, Refusal of the Call. This stage is where the hero initially refuses the call to adventure, usually because of the danger or because it's out of their comfort zone. This also conveys the formidability of the challenge ahead, and maybe even the protagonist's personal stake in the story. Tony's refusal was portrayed when he refused to build weapons for the terrorists, therefore giving up any possibility of escape and resigning himself to death. Next is... Number 4. Meeting with the Mentor. This stage is where the hero meets with a mentor that will prepare them for the journey ahead, usually because they have some experience and knowledge that the hero may need. The mentor can also help the protagonist commit to the adventure. There may not always be a specific mentor character, but heroes usually make contact with some source of wisdom before committing to the adventure. While Tony was trapped in a cave by terrorists, he met Yensin, a scientist who brought him back from the brink of death. He also motivated Tony to fight back against the terrorists who stole his weapons. Not to mention he helped Tony build an arc reactor and the Iron Man Mark I. Yintin helped Tony start his journey by giving him the tools he needed to stop the terrorists from misusing his weapons. Next is Number 5, Crossing the First Threshold. This is an act of will in which the hero commits wholeheartedly to the adventure. This is often brought by an outside force which changes the course or intensity of the story, like a villain killing, kidnapping, or harming someone close to the hero. It can also be brought about by internal events, like the hero asking themselves, do they go on living life as normal or risk everything in an effort to grow and change? The hero may also run into a threat that challenges them before crossing the threshold. It's usually not a serious threat, but some effort is necessary to get past it. This is also the end of the first act of the story. Tony Stark crosses the first threshold when he builds the Mark I and fights back against the terrorists. After these terrorists kill his mentor, Tony has the resolve to push forward and continue his hero's journey. Next is Number 6, Tests, Allies, Enemies. This marks the beginning of Act 2. In this stage, the hero has fully entered the mysterious special world. The hero is tested and put through a series of trials and challenges meant to prepare them for greater ordeals ahead. They would encounter difficult obstacles, but they don't usually have life or death stakes. Part of this stage is also where the hero figures out who they can rely on and who they cannot. Basically, it's figuring out who their allies and enemies are. Throughout the film, it is shown that Tony's allies are Pepper Potts, and Colonel James Rhodes. 
The audience sees some friendship with Obadiah Stane, but it is implied that Tony doesn't really trust him. We also know that the Ten Rings terrorist organization are Tony's enemies from the last act. Tony also went through multiple tests, such as shutting down the weapons manufacturing division of Stark Industries, upgrading his arc reactor, learning how to fly, and building the Marks 2 II and 3. Next is number 7, Approach to the Inmost Cave. This is the part just before the hero encounters a central ordeal. Some examples could be doing reconnaissance on the enemy before the ordeal, a student studying for midterms, or even a hunter stalking their game to its hiding place. This is when Tony Stark found out that his weapons were still being sold to terrorists and that Obadiah Stane may be the reason as to why. Part of the approach to the inmost cave also includes Tony suiting up in the Mark III as he is preparing for the battle ahead. Next is number 8, The Ordeal. This is where the hero faces their greatest challenge yet. It is where the hero faces death, metaphorically of course, but sometimes literally, so that they can be reborn. They face death or something like it, like their greatest fears, failure of an enterprise, the end of a relationship, or the death of an old personality. The hero then overcomes this, and they are symbolically reborn. It is a central event of the story, but it isn't the climax. It's more of a crisis, or the point in the story at which hostile forces are in their tensest state of opposition. After suiting up, Tony flies to Gomera to save the refugees who are being harassed by the terrorists who kidnapped him at the beginning of the movie. Defeating these terrorists, protecting refugees, and destroying the stolen weapons are all part of Tony's ordeal. A second part of the ordeal could be having to deal with the US Air Force when he flew in the no-fly zone. Next is Number 9, Reward. In this stage, the hero gets a reward after overcoming the ordeal, such as treasure, a celebration, or a party. They don't have to be physical rewards though. They can be abstract concepts like love, acknowledgement, a new perspective, and self-confidence. This is also when the hero starts moving back towards the ordinary world. The reward Tony receives is that his enemies no longer have access to any Stark weapons, and he was able to save a bunch of innocent people. Another reward is that he was finally able to reveal to his friend, Colonel James Rhodes, that he is Iron Man. Next is... Number 10, The Road Back. This stage is where the hero has to deal with the consequences of overcoming the ordeal. The villain is angry over the hero's success, so the villain prepares their counterattack. The hero is attempting to return back to the ordinary world at this point with their newfound knowledge and skills from the special world. Sometimes the motivation for the hero to return may be caused by the villain. This stage also marks the transition from Act 2 to Act 3. This would be when Obadiah Stane found out that Tony had ruined his deal with the terrorists, so he built a suit of his own. He then attacked Tony and stole his arc reactor to make his own suit. Next is Number 11, Resurrection. This is the climax of the story, where the hero has their most dangerous encounter with death. It usually represents something far greater than the hero's own existence, meaning that losing can have consequences for people in the ordinary world. The hero usually succeeds at this stage, and then they are reborn after the encounter. The resurrection often calls for something to be sacrificed by the hero. This is where Tony Stark faces off against Obadiah Stane in a battle of the Iron Man versus the Iron Monger. If Tony had lost this battle, the consequence would have been that Pepper Potts would die and Tony's most dangerous weapons would be accessed by people he does not trust. At the end, he sacrificed his life, but he still came out alive though. Next is... Number 12, Return with Elixir. This is the stage when the hero returns to the ordinary world as a changed person who's looking forward to the start of a new life. They come back with things that they have learned or gained to help people of the ordinary world. This is the elixir that they return with. Tony Stark has become the hero type and is accepted that he is Iron Man. He shares that identity with the world, which not only gives us one of the most iconic lines in the MCU, I am Iron Man. But also conveys that Tony is going to use the wisdom he gained on his journey to help people.
Those are the 12 steps of the hero's journey. The great thing about this structure is that it is very flexible. The steps don't always have to be in that specific order. Even in Iron Man, they showed the call to adventure before they showed the ordinary world. Plenty of good stories play around with this structure. Some even remove entire steps altogether. The hero's journey is more of a skeletal framework that should be fleshed out with the details and surprises of an individual story. Thank you for watching this video. I was originally planning to make this two separate videos, with one explaining the hero's journey and the other explaining how it exists in Iron Man, but I decided that it would probably just be better to put it all in one video. So if you like this video, be sure to leave a like and blast that subscribe button to see more hero's journey analyses on this channel. And feel free to comment your thoughts on the hero's journey, and let me know if you want to see me cover the character archetypes that were discussed in Vlogler's book as well. I'll see you in the next life. Peace out.